Welcome everyone to this live rigging session. Uh, my name is Demeter. I am the character rigger at the Blender Animation Studio uh, for the last uh, three-ish years, which means I have rigged a, um, the rain character, uh, which I can scroll down to here, which uh, if you are animators, then hopefully you are familiar with, because apparently it's been very popular, and apparently people don't hate this rig. Um, uh, so Rain's rig was actually built bone by bone in a very painful way, but that was the last rig that I did that way. And then I, um, <coughs> every rig uh, that the Blender Studio has released uh, since Rain onwards uh, has been made by me. So the ones that you see here um, that are the Settlers characters, uh, those were also um, made by me. Uh, by that time, we had a procedural rigging workflow um, working. Uh, which is called CloudRig, which is my feature set that uh, is built on top of Rigify, um, which I will show off today, of course. And then, of course, uh, Sprite Fright. So all of these characters are available um, at our website on studio.blender.org. I think some of them are free and some of them are not. I believe Rain and the Settlers characters are free, and the Sprite Fright characters, I think, are still behind the paywall. So uh, give us money and you can have rigs. Um, <laughs> and then the, the latest rig that we made uh, was Snow. Um, who was also rigged um, live for the most part, I believe. Uh, and the, the live streams of that rigging process are available on um, our YouTube channel. So today's session is going to be very fast. Um, if anybody watching this online wants to follow along, do not, because you won't be able to. Uh, because I have 50 minutes, and my goal is to rig uh, Sintel uh, as far as I can. And there's going to be a lot of uh, skips, I think. Uh, so I have some checkpoint files where I can jump into the future, so I don't have to. Um, do everything, but the goal of the session is to showcase my workflow, and I would love to hear uh, from other riggers um, how they do things differently, and I, I would also love to see um, other riggers sometimes of, um, you know, because uh, I was just in the, the rigging um, special interest group talk yesterday where I was chatting with a bunch of riggers, and we seem to recognize that everybody works in a different way where everybody had to hack their own tools and all that stuff, so that's what I'm going to show off today, what I've hacked together for my workflow over the past uh, three years. Uh, okay, so, and that's about it. Let's get started. So, I have a Sintel here with some detail meshes, I believe, hidden? Not yet hidden? Okay, now they're hidden. So, to make this easy and for the sake of time, because time is very short, uh, we're not going to worry about those detail meshes, but what I would do probably is to just slap a surface deform on them anyways. In fact, maybe I've already done that here, I don't know. So, point is, uh, here we have just some meshes and uh, shaders that were done, you know, 10 years ago. Um, also, why did I pick Sintel? I don't know. Uh, she was there. Uh, <laughs> uh, so let's uh, see how I would start rigging this. Um, normally, of course, I would start with one of the presets that I've already made for, for humans. Um, so the, I have a, a basic human meta rig uh, built into cloud rig, and uh, then I also already have a, a meta rig specifically for Sintel. That would be cheating, so we're not going to do that. Uh, so I'm just going to show you how you would uh, start from absolute scratch, because I think it's more interesting, even though it makes the whole time constraint thing a lot more stressful. But so here, I'll just uh, spawn a bone, put it roughly in place. Uh, praise the Lord that my keybinds are actually working. Uh, we'll rename this to spine one. And then I have my uh, own extrude operator hacked in, which just calls the regular extrude operator. But if you notice here, my bone names are not being butchered. Um, but inst so inst normally, when you duplicate or extrude the bone, you would get the dot zero zero one ending. And uh, I had enough of that after two years, so I just uh, hacked something. <coughs> Uh, the only downside is when I press E, I have to then press G, otherwise it doesn't work, but don't worry about it. Uh, okay, so we have some bones, and let's... Uh, I'm going to assume that maybe some people watching aren't familiar with the Rigify workflow at all, so I'll try to explain, um, even though I'm speaking very fast. I'll just uh, try to include as much information as I can. So what I'm building now, what I'm trying to build now, is what I call the meta rig. Not meta rig, meta rig, as in, like, a rig within a rig, which is not what it is at all. It's more like uh, a rig that will de define the behavior of another rig, which, will, which I will refer to as the generated rig or the control rig. Um, so for the meta rig, our goal is to just place the bones, to find, find out where the character's joints are going to be, and also to assign rigify types, which you can see here, and that's a, an interface that comes from the rigify add-on, which maybe I should show off really quickly. So in Blender, you have uh, rigify as a built-in add-on that you can enable. And then if you want to get CloudRig, which is the feature set I will be using today, then you can just go on um, Blender GitLab CloudRig, and you can download CloudRig from there. 
and you can report issues, and wow, that's bright. Uh, okay, and let's go back to Blender, and remember to full screen. So, uh, so let's say this is a spine, and the thing is, um, so to know how to use a rig fire or cloud rig, you kind of have to be, you kind of have to have an idea of what rig types are available, and these rig types are of course like, you can kind of think of them as like a node group in shading or geometry nodes. There's a bunch of, and I wish that this was also made with nodes, and um, there are endeavors in that front uh, currently going on. But so the point is, they are just a bunch of preset behaviors that have been implemented in Python, uh, but they could be implemented in nodes if there was such a node system, and some people have made some, so yeah. And so as you can see, once I assign the cloud spine uh, rig type to this bone here, which is the beginning of my spine, I see all these parameters, and these are parameters that somehow relate to the spine and what kind of rig is going to be generated, which I'll show off in a second. Uh, so I would say for now, let's just not touch anything. Uh, and I can come here to this window, and this button sometimes fails, but let's try it. So if you, we press generate cloud rig, Ah, there you go, we get a rig. Uh, but notice how it's ginormous, like the shapes are ginormous, and the way that is controlled in Cloud Rig is a bit esoteric, but you just have to bear with me. So you have to set the display type to bendy bone, and then you can uh, scale the bendy bones with Control alt s This is just a visual scale, this is not like an, an actual scale of the bone, so if I go here to the place where it shows the scale, you can see it's still just one, one, one. Um, so that's just the visual uh, scale for bendy bones, and if I regenerate now with a, with a shortcut, which I'll be using from now on, well, now everything is way too small, um, so let's try that again. And I just kind of mess with this until it works out. And I can also toggle between the generated rig and the meta rig with shift T, so if you see the rig like flipping like this, that's what I'm doing. Um, and generally, the meta rig is not gonna have bone shapes, so that's how you can recognize that one is the meta rig and the other is the generated rig. So I hope uh, it's kind of starting to make sense the the relation between these two things, I could rename this to, you know, meta syntel and this one to rig syntel, but when I jump into the future, that renaming is gonna be undone because when I first um, rehearsed this, I didn't do that. Uh, but anyways, uh, something that annoys me, uh, usually by default in rigify, is that uh, the bone colors are, they have this thing where if you select them, then they're always the same color, and I hate it. So there's an option for that. Here in the Rigify settings, under advanced, I have unified select slash active colors. I disable that, I regenerate, and now my bone colors are how I want them. Okay, so we have a hip, and also I can press shift M to get the, um, the armature layers. This is something that is kind of a, it's something that originates from Rigify and then CloudRig <coughs> built on top of it. Of course, there's a million add-ons out there that let you name armature layers, and this is just uh, one of them. Uh, so we can show hidden layers and show the deformation bones, and you can kind of see uh, what the rig is doing. Uh, of course, the mesh is not deforming yet because that's uh, the next step. Uh, but yeah, so this is the kind of rig that we're getting here. The issue is um, currently it thinks that the head also belongs to the spine. Uh, also, <coughs> we have um, this uh, this panel here, the cladric panel, is also being generated by the whole system. Um, this is a, just a big uh, Python file that's in the text editor. Oh no, not my notes. Uh, so here's a giant Python file um, that just gets output and that is responsible for this interface. And in this interface, what I wanna do real quick is to switch the spine to IK, because it's more interesting. So this is uh, the IK spine rig that's included with, uh, with Cloud Rig. It's uh, fairly straightforward, it's quite similar to Rigify, just slight differences. Uh, but the issue is, right now, the head is part of the spine, which is not what we want. So I'm gonna go back to the meta rig, and what I want to do is, um, so because uh, Cloud Rig assumes that each bone chain um, is like one, um, basically one rig, so, or one rig element. So when I assign cloud spine here, uh, cloud rig will go down the chain and assume that as long as there aren't, uh, there isn't a branching, um, like a tree of children in the skeleton, or another bone that has a rig type, it's gonna be one thing. So this whole thing is the spine right now, which is not what we want. Because I want this to be the neck and this to be the head. So I can do that. And for the neck, uh, I don't have anything special, uh, so I just tend to assign the cloud FK chain uh, rig type, and um, for now, let's just do that. And regenerate, and now you can see the spine is down here. Ah, it's not so exciting without the IK, there you go. So now the spine is down there doing IK stuff, and then you have a simple neck bone, simple head bone, uh, that's fine. Uh, okay, and then let's call that done, even though of course there's a million settings here that you can play with, and I could show them off, but uh, time is of the essence. So let's continue by slapping down a shoulder here. Call it shoulder.l. Uh, I sh should probably worry about the axes, but uh, forget about it. Uh, 
and then you want the elbow, and this I want to show because it, it can get people kind of bamboozled, um, that there is something specific you need to do about the shoulders. I hope I get it wrong the first time. Um, with Sintel, I should get it wrong uh, because of the way her limb is shaped. It should be, yeah, so if I just do this. So where, what I did now is I'm just trying to snap my uh, joints, like let's call the points between the bones joints. I'm just trying to put those to the center of the mesh, which is what you would probably do intuitively, which is fine. Uh, but now if I assign my cloud limb type to the shoulder, which is what you use to create uh, arm rigs, and then I regen regenerate, it's probably gonna go badly. Well, okay, first of all, I need to name my bones properly. Uh, so let's do that. So this is shoulder L, this is upper arm the L. Always gotta name your bones, it's boring, but you gotta do it. Elbow the L, hand the L. Well, if you already have a metric prepared, then you don't have to do it. Um, so there you go. Uh, what happened now is that it's like, you know, the elbow is not really bending in the direction that we would want. Also, the IK pole is down here. And the reason for that is, of course, because the, the curvature of this um, bone chain is like this. And Cladric just uses that to determine where to put the IK pole. So in your character's model, you kind of have to, you want to be aware of that and try to make it possible to, um, to make sure that the, um, the bone chain can be, the curvature of the bone chain can point towards the elbow. I hope that's a sentence. Um, and so we're gonna try to do that. It seems that it can be a bit tricky. I'm not gonna try to make it perfect. So like, this one might be too low, it doesn't matter. Uh, okay, this should definitely work now. It's quite extreme. So there you go. Now the pole target is back here and then this elbow should be kind of, eh, it's better. Uh, of course, you can tweak this into oblivion until it's like a perfect uh, thing. You can also mess with the, the bone rolls in edit mode with control R, uh, which I think would make a difference. You know what, let's test it. Uh, did that make a difference? I don't know. You know what, let's test it more. Eh, eh, eh. Quick iteration. Okay, I don't think that makes a difference to the direction that it bends in, which is kind of fascinating. But anyway, <laughs> I have no idea why that is or why that isn't. Oh God, that's not what I want. Uh, uh, no, okay, wait. You know what, we'll do this, and then we do recalculate to, recalculate to active bone. Good enough, good enough. Okay, uh, then you would place the fingers, and that's like quite unexciting, so I think this is what, the part where I'm gonna jump into the future, but what I would do just to show you is just, you know, just pretty much what you would expect, just place bones at the finger joints. And I mean, that is much trickier than it sounds, which is exactly why I don't really have time to show it properly. Because to, to place the finger joints in the correct position, well, uh, that would kind of mean that when you just rotate the finger bones on their local x-axis, you should get a fist with at least like, you know, forget about the thumb, but at least the four fingers should roll into a fist in a way where like, you know, all the, the, uh, the first, what is it it's called, the uh, knuckles, are uh, kind of aligned instead of like being all wonky and messed up. So that takes a lot of trial and, and error and going back and forth and regenerating the rig a million times. Uh, so I'm not gonna do that, but instead, I'm gonna jump into the future where I have already done it. And if you wanna see how that would actually be done, then go watch the live streams. Boom, it's done. So what I would do at this stage, oh, I also did the legs. Um, I think that's fine. How's my time? Actually, kind of good, but that's fine. Uh, I'll briefly show something about the legs. Um, oops. So the fingers are really not that exciting. These are also cloud FK chains. There is also a cloud finger rig type in here, which has like some fancy behaviors. Maybe, honestly, I didn't even test this. I don't even know if it's gonna work. Okay, so this has like IK switching in it, which we don't, we don't really use this at the studio. I think maybe one rig in Sprite Fright ended up um, using IK fingers. Uh, but it's quite rare that the animators want it, uh, fingers, so it's super hidden. Uh, I'm not a big fan of this. Um, inter like this interface kind of falls apart when there's uh, 10 fingers, we each of them have four sliders. Uh, but so, yeah, it has IK, as you can see, um, and then you can do like stuff like, oh, stuff like this. Uh, so it's kind of fancy, but also kind of unnecessary uh, for my animators, so I don't tend to use it. So I'll just put it back to a cloud FK chain, and the cloud FK chain is a super simple rig type, you know, just a bunch of FK bones, cartoon bones, pretty much if, if you use Rigify, it's more or less what you would expect. Uh, yeah, so that's the fingers, very simple. I also don't have any like big controls here that like make a fist or, or things that like affect the, the outermost fingers and that kind of stuff. 
I used to have that when I first uh, came to the studio, but then the animators just said that they are not using it, so I should stop wasting time on it. And so I was like, okay, fine. Um, okay, so the, for the legs, so I already have them set up here because I jumped into the future, which is fine, but I just wanted to show off that uh, it's, this is using the cloud leg rig type, and what it allows you, what it expects from you, first of all, is a chain of uh, four bones. So different rig types might have different expectations, like the spine works with any number of bones, that's fine. The cloud limb type uh, expects a chain of three. And then you can tell this is a chain of three. It's not visualized at all, unfortunately. You just have to kind of know this, which is super sad, I think. But the only reason that Cloudrig knows that these three bones are the arm is it's, it's a quite esoteric reasoning. So because the rig type is assigned to this bone, and then this has a direct child, which is only one child, and then that happens again. But then this one has several children. So at that point, it's like, okay, that's the end then. Which is, yeah, it's kind of esoteric, but that's how it is. Uh, one more thing I wanted to show off with the leg is that it allows you to um, specify a heel pivot uh, position with a bone, which in this case is this bone right here. And what that does in the rig is it sets up the, um, the foot roll thing. I don't know why this is all twisted, please ignore. Uh, so you get the foot roll, um, and when you foot roll backwards, then it's pivoting around uh, this guy for you. Uh, but moving this doesn't actually do anything. That's just there to mark the position of, the, of where it should rotate from. Okay, so. The thing I would do once I am happy with my uh, joint positions and whatnot, and also like the bone rolls and all that stuff you have to worry about, I think that's why I have the axes enabled here, which I'll hide now. What I would do next is go into edit mode and just hit symmetrize. Oh, excuse me, a bone is hidden. Two bones were hidden. Okay, so just hit symmetrize and then regenerate. And of course, symmetrize also symmetrizes the rigify parameters. So there you go, we kind of have a full uh, body rig. Um, also, I wanted to show off some features, I think, um, more about the, the Cloud FK chain. Uh, so as you can see, there's a million checkboxes here. One that I wanted to go into was the uh, hinge checkbox, because um, animators tend to uh, ask for this, at least in my experience. So for the neck, let's say that I want to create a setup where it's possible to rotate the character's torso while either their neck or their head or both um, stays upright. Um, and the way that you can create such a setup, well, normally you would have to create a bunch of bones and constraints and whatnot. Here, you just you want to make sure that this hinge thing is not grayed out. And well, I try to communicate in, that in the UI by you know putting it underneath its requirement, which is this one. So the create root just uh, creates a root bone for this uh, neck, and that's necessary for the hinge mechanism. Uh, so now, if I regenerate. I should have shown you that this wasn't there before, but um, so now this is still not doing it. But what has happened is that now in the rig interface here in the sidebar, under FK, we have a hinge section, and this next slider wasn't here before, now it's here. Uh, you know what, I'll prove it to you by going back, disabling this, and regenerating. There you go, the next slider is gone. So let's get that back, because I want it. Well, it's not that important to be honest, but there you go. So that's what this does, and now you can uh, move the hips around while the neck stays upright. Uh, you might want to do this with the head instead. Well, guess what? You can just, well, in this case, uh, I could, for example, just uh, select the head first and then select the neck. And then there's a button here to copy rigify type and parameters. So that's going to copy this Cloud FK chain assignment and the checkboxes that I created here, or, well, the checkboxes that I set up here to the head. So now that's also its own rig type. And that means now it also gets its own slider. Well, the ordering here is super unideal. Uh, also, I don't know why there's like finger stuff sneaking in here. Eh, don't worry about it. <clears throat> this is fine. Uh, okay, so now we have a rig. Uh, you've seen some of the features. Uh, and I would say, I would argue that was much easier than setting this up manually one by one. Uh, also, by the way, this is, this is nothing. Uh, this, is, this is all the mechanism bones that you don't have to worry about because CloudRig just uh, set them up for you. So uh, that's nice. Uh, this part you wouldn't do anyways. So this is just the the bones from the meta rig being copied over. But yeah, look at all this giant mess. You get all of that for free, kind of. Uh, okay, so what is next? Mm -hmm. Let me look at my notes. Da -da -da -da. I made a spine, a neck, and a head. I made an arm, I made fingers. Uh, more fingers, symmetrized, yeah. Weights, let's start doing some weight painting. Well, it's gonna be very, you know, yeah, you know, what kind of weight painting is gonna be, <laughs> well. So I'm gonna do some very simple weight painting. So of course, currently our rig does not deform our character at all. Uh, she's just been standing here this whole time uh, for no reason. But now let's start actually deforming the character. And so the way, I, the fastest way I can do that, oh look, my renaming of the armatures is gone because I jumped into the future. 
So what I want to do is hide the details again. And because I am prepared, I should, in theory, be able to just select all of these objects and click on my generated rig, press Control-P, and parent it with automatic rates. This is the YouTube tutorial way of doing it, which is fine. It's, I mean, that's how I do it. It's very efficient. The only thing that I wish there was an option for is for the armature modifier to be in some clever place in the modifier stack because you know, all these objects, they come from the modeling department. They have a subsurf. The armature needs to be before the subsurf. Otherwise, you're deforming a, a, a very heavy mesh, uh, which is not what you want, usually. Uh, so uh, I probably shouldn't worry about this, whatever. Uh, OK. So now, in theory, everything is deforming. Oh, there you go. You rig the character. Uh, so yeah, there you go. OK, of course, it's terrible because it's automatic weights. And so I want to find some rough spots and do a little bit of cleanup. Like, okay, let's take this, where like the whole character, just there's giant gaps everywhere. Like, yeah, okay, of course. Yeah, automatic weights uh, usually have terrible results on, on the waste area. So I'm going to try to show off a little bit of my weight painting workflow, but please don't expect much, because this is the part that's usually extremely finicky, takes forever. Um, but I will say a lot of people are very horrified of weight painting, and I understand that. But there are ways to make it not that painful, and I'll try to show some stuff. Uh, so first things first, I want to mention that some of the interface that you'll be seeing is coming from my EasyWeight add-on, which is on the interwebs. Um, you'll never guess, Blender, GitLab, EasyWeight. And then it's here. Um, so um, all this does, I have a shortcut for going into weight paint mode. And what that lets me do, oh, come on, do I have to click this twice? Okay. So, uh, normally, to enter weight paint mode in Blender, you have to select the armature, select the mesh, then go weight paint mode, and then you're fine. Uh, I hate that. Also, sometimes I have the rig hidden, and I still want to weight paint it, so I just made an operator that like, reveals the rig, goes into pose mode on it, all that stuff. So I just press Control tab and I can start weight painting, uh, which is lovely. The other thing is this context menu that is just, it's kind of like a, a quick shelf that I just had to build for myself in Python, just all the buttons that I like to use. So this is like brush settings. Uh, which also affect every brush instead of just the current one. Um, Auto-normalize, which maybe I'll try to explain. Um, symmetry options, uh, weight display thing. Uh, well, yeah, all kinds of display options and some operators. So yeah, this is just a complete random, my personal tools. But honestly, if you're horrified of weight painting, then just try to figure out how I do it, because I'm pretty happy with how I do it, to be honest. Um, so yeah, I'll be using this context menu a bunch, um, da -da 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 -da. Yeah, which I have bound to W, which overwrites some other existing context menu in Blender that is like useless. Um, and then this one I won't, go, I won't be using, but there's some tools in there for hunting rogue weights and some operators for dealing with vertex, uh, vertex groups. That's fine. The, most, the main thing I'll be using is this stuff. And also, one more thing is some key bindings, which I believe are still not default and they might never be default. And that should be called paint something. So, whoa, 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 that's a lot of grease pencil. Whoa, please, weight paint, weight paint, there you go. So I have some key bindings set up. So as you can see, left mouse is the, the regular, this is the, the built-in thing, I think, stroke mode regular. And then I have control left mouse for invert and shift left mouse for smooth, which is exactly what you're used to in sculpt mode and something that people have been wanting in weight paint mode for a long time. And it is actually now possible. But as far as I know, this is not existing by default because of conflicts with left-click select or whatever. So whoever advocated for left-click select, shame on you. you. This is why we can't have nice things. But if you set those keybinds up manually, then you are able to um, add, subtract, and blur weights on the fly, which is how I work. So I have the add brush here, always. Um, I don't use the draw brush. Other people do. I just use, I don't know why there's like a bunch of these things. Uh, I only use add, subtract, and blur. Uh, so the way that works, and I can also press Shift F to change the strength, but I'm kind of concerned. Okay, yeah. this is fine. Okay, and so let me just get rid of some bone layers that I don't really need, which is like I mean, kind of everything. Um, maybe I should also show off the feature for generating a test animation. Mm, maybe I'll do that in a sec, but for now this is fine. So as you can see, I'm adding weights to the hip bone um, to these vertices here. Uh, and because the leg is in this pose, I can see how that affects um, you know, this particular pose, uh, which is handy. So this is how I like to weight paint with the character in some pose, so I can see what happens to the mesh. 
in a certain pose and hope that then the ways that I create in that pose will be good in other poses. And usually that's true, you know. Uh, also, I tend to not use the weight contours, but I think they are actually awesome. I just literally, I just forget. Uh, yeah, I can highly recommend. It's a new-ish feature, I guess. Um, if, well, it's not that new anymore. Uh, so yeah, uh, let's see. There you go, we close the gap. And you can see that I don't have to, like, I think if you're using the regular weight painting workflow, then you would be like jumping between this interface and this interface and clicking a bunch. Uh, what I'm doing here is just pressing control to subtract, pressing shift to, to blur. Uh, shout out to Sebastian Parborg if he's here because he made those keybinds possible uh, for, the, for the weight paintbrush. So big thanks to him. Uh, okay, yeah, I mean, like I said, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on this. It's always going to be a disaster. Okay, okay, come on, at least let's make it a little bit better. Uh, I also have a keybind to toggle wireframe on Control W. Uh, that's the, the per object wireframe, I think, uh, which I think is quite handy. Oh man, like this, this is a nightmare. There's no fast way of doing this, so I'm just I'm just gonna blur the hell out of it and like hope for the best. You kind of get the idea though. Like that's really all my weight painting workflow is. Um, get the right display settings. Um, well, there's auto normalize, which. I didn't really explain here, and I don't know if I should, because it's kind of, it's going to confuse everyone. I'll try. So there's this option here, auto-normalize. I'll show you the proper place where it normally is. Uh, how am I with time? Half there. Oh my god, it's pretty good. Uh, so auto-normalize, is the tooltip any use? Ensure all bone-deforming vertex groups add up to 1.0 while weight painting. I think that's accurate. So what that means is that um, as I add weights to one bone, uh, it subtracts weights from other bones. Whoa. Like that. <laughs> yeah, so that can happen. Uh, and what you want to do then is I have a, a keybind on Shift C for the clean vertex group operator, which I assume is in here somewhere. Uh, clean. Yeah, so that one removes um, vertex weights that are like near zero, which I think should mean that I should be able to blur this now with that stuff flying away. So, so because probably like some random bone in the other leg had some tiny, tiny weights here. When I try to blur the weights on this one, they ended up getting added to, to whatever random bone it was weighted to, and the, the cleanup operator uh, fixed that. Okay, so there we go. I'm gonna call that done, because time. And then what am I doing next? Am I jumping into the future yet? I'm looking at my notes. One second, please. Do a little bit of weight and cleanup on the pants. Done. Make eye bones. Okay, and I don't have a checkpoint for that. So let's uh, pretend that this uh, leg thing is fine. Uh, yeah. Give me stuff. Let's reset everything. And I want to make some eye bones real quick, which is just one of the features in CloudRig. It's very simple. Uh, I probably shouldn't have duplicated that head, but we're going to roll with it. So I'll call this i.l. And as you would expect, you want to snap that to the center of the eyeball, which is not always the object origin, but sometimes it is. Depends on who did the modeling. And then you want to snap the end of that bone to the end of the eyeball, like that. Give it some reasonable uh, bone roll. Global X, sure, whatever. And what I want to do next is assign the cloud aim rig type to that one, which is, of course, just a, a rigging setup that aims at a target. Um, this one used to be called cloud I, and then I renamed it to cloud aim, and then I added like I specific behavior to it. So, whatever, don't worry about naming. Um, point is, this will generate us a thing. Let me also parent this to the head because it's going to be important. Uh, there we go. So if I generate this and hide stuff that's in the way, so this gets by default put on the face layer, which is fine. And then we have an eye bone here, uh, which doesn't do anything yet, but it also has a little target here, which you kind of can't see that it's doing something, but let me bring it closer. So it's just a basic uh, look at setup with a damped track constraint, that's fine. But to make this actually work, I want to have a deform bone, which is optional for this rig, so I have to enable create deform. It's off by default, so I'll do that. And now I have a deforming bone here on the, on, the, on the def layer of my rig. So I can use that to, oh wait. Okay, so apparently I also did automatic weights for the eyes, which is not good. So let me just delete everything. And then hop into weight pay mode and just put a bunch of weights there. And because this eye mesh is using the mirror modifier, which is good, and this armature modifier wants to be right after that. I'm sorry, I, I don't need to fix that. It's just, it's hard not to. Okay, so the way the, mirror, the way the mirror modifier works for anyone who isn't aware is it will automatically mm, try to mirror 
well, not try, they will successfully mirror the weights of vertex groups that end in .l or .r, and a few other naming conventions are supported. Uh, so as soon as, as you saw, right now, um, this left vertex group um, has both i's in it, but as soon as I create a new group and name it exactly defi.r, it suddenly gets this vertex group in it, and suddenly the left vertex group only has the left i, and that's because of the mirror modifier. I think it has an option for it as well. Uh, yeah, mirror vertex groups or not. It's on by default, which is good. Uh, okay, so now, in theory, we should be able to move our eye bone, and it should move Sintel's eye. Lovely. Now we just need to do that on the other side. So I'm just going to come to the meta rig again, press symmetrize, regenerate, and we have two eye rigs. And, whoa. Okay, so that guy is huge, which is fine, because that was planned, because I'm going to use it to show something off. Uh, there you go. You have an eye target for both eyes, an eye target for just one eye. These are kind of small, but whatever. Uh, the bigger issue for me is that this is huge. <coughs> I know it's just a cosmetic thing, but it's a perfect opportunity to show off a feature that I was planning to show off. So I would like to do something very specific, which is, in this case, to uh, squash the shape of this bone to be a bit more uh, pleasing for animators. So maybe something like this, or, or something like this, sure. Uh, so I want to make sure that when I regenerate the rig, those changes stay there. Right now, they will not, so I made this change. If I regenerate the rig, it's going to get discarded, and I have this giant, massive thing again. Let me undo that. Uh, so what I can do to make such specific changes, this unfortunately requires some Python, but I still want to show it off. Oh, no, but I was given the advice to never show code. Uh-oh. Don't leave. It's only going to be a few seconds, and it's very, very little code. So uh, something that you can do in Rigify and CloudRig both is create a little script that I'm, in this case, going to call Sintel postgen.py, and you can tell Rigify to execute this script at the end of the rig generation process by doing this right here. So just specify the text data block, and then you just do some Python stuff, import Blender Python, and then you can always assume that the rig is going to be the active object. So we've got a context uh, object. If, if I'm doing something like blatantly obviously wrong in the code, uh, feel free to shout in. Um, this should only be like two lines. Uh, so what I want to do is find this exact bone. Uh, so I just F2, Control C, I have the name. And then I want to do rig.pose.bones, this thing, dot, and then we find out what this thing is called. What is it? So you can just right click on this and say copy data path. Well, I guess I didn't need to type that part out. Boom. So custom ship scale XYZ equals, and I know that this is a list of numbers. So oh, okay. is it possible to? No. And then I'll just have to copy these in one by one which is fine. So now, in theory, this script should get executed when the rig generates, and we should get our bone shape to remain like this. So let's try that. And it worked. Oh, but I guess I scaled it down earlier, so it's a bit bigger. That's fine. Don't worry about it. The point is, this is how you can make like very specific, very small changes to the rig. Um, at least this is one way to do it. Uh, another way would be with the cloud tweak bone type in the meta rig. So you could like create a, I'm not going to show this the whole way through, but uh, if you create a bone here with the same name as the bone that you want to modify, and then you give it the cloud tweak rig type, that also allows you to make such small tweaks. But I prefer to do it in Python because I'm familiar with Python, and that doesn't clutter the meta rig so much, and I like to try to keep the meta rig as clean as possible. So I'm going to get rid of that. But just so you know, if you are really allergic to Python, which I don't approve of, then you can avoid it. <laughs> okay, so now... Okay, use Potion script to tweak the eye target shape, done. Oh, place the jaw and wait it, uh-oh. Okay, so let's start on the face, and time is like another 17 minutes, if I'm correct. It should be fine, actually. Uh, so, to get started on the face, how do you rig faces with Cloud Rig? How do you rig faces with Rigify? Well, not that easily, to be honest. So, it's not, I don't really have like, like something like the spine where you just put down a bone and you press a button and it generates you an awesome spine rig. I don't really have something like that for the face. You could, I think, have that for like a specific face and Sintel's face is reasonably generic, but it's quite stylized, I would say, still. Uh, but still, you point is, I haven't developed a system like that so far because Look at our characters. Like you think you can make something generic for this face and this face and have them share? I mean, okay, those two maybe, but this guy and this guy, good luck. 
so yeah, I tried and I failed. Maybe someone smarter than me could do it, but I sure couldn't. So uh, do I use Cloud Jaw or Cloud Copy? I think I'm just gonna use Cloud Copy. So all that said that I don't have a generic uh, face setup, I do have a generic Jaw setup that does some fancy stuff. Um, for like being able to move the lips without the jaw and the jaw without the lips and stuff like that. Uh, that exists, but I'm not gonna set it up today because it's kind of convoluted. Uh, but the next thing I want to show uh, workflow wise is that I have a thing, is this in Cloud Rig? Okay, actually this is in Cloud Rig now, I think. So if I press Control Alt E, which I don't think is a built-in shortcut, wait, wait. Don't you worry, because in Cloud Rig we have an interface for built-in shortcuts. Is it there? It's not there. Uh, so, but if you have Clouding installed, I, I need to make some proper interface for this, but um, for now, what you can do, so what is this, Control alt e if you, set, if you find this operator and you set up a shortcut for it manually with this nightmare hotkey editor, um, then what that is, it's called toggle edit widget. It's an operator that I put into Clouding um, because I wanted to. Uh, and it lets you pick, <laughs> without a preview, because of course, uh, a bone shape that you want to quickly apply. So I'm just gonna, I have a jaw shape that I always use, so boom. Uh, there you go, don't have to model it, uh, it's just there. <clears throat> uh, so that's good. Um, and now, in the cloud copy rig type, uh, the create deform is also turned off by default, so I'm gonna enable that, and it regenerates, and now we have a jaw bone, not very exciting. And then I'm also gonna show you how I start uh, weight painting a jawbone. So here's some extra uh, weight painting for your pleasure or torture. Uh, just because, again, I, I really want to, I want one of the main takeaways from this live rigging thing to be that weight painting, it is trash, yes, but there are ways to make it less trash. So here's what I did here. I selected a bunch of vertices in edit mode. I go into weight paint mode, I press V to get the vertex mask. I rotate the jawbone a, a bit. And then as I start painting, the vertices start moving to the jawbone because I rotated it. And so I'm just gonna do that with this whole selection. I could, that's probably a shortcut for that. But you know what, maybe I won't go all the way. I'll just start blurring it here. And there you go. Uh, you can, uh, technical difficulties. Also, I can recommend these, check with these buttons if you're not aware of it. So this is like a make my deformation visible in, ed in edit mode. Um, it's a bit wonky if you try to move things or if you want to use like uh, transform gizmos, which I, know, I never do. Uh, but anyways, for selecting stuff, it's pretty great. So I just want those lower vertices, there you go, uh, to also come along. Eh, there's more. There's always more. Okay, uh, let's just do the selection, go back to weight paint, boom. Okay, and so, I mean, you get the idea. You can also come in here. Uh, something, a, a tip I would give, if you are like in a scenario like this where you're inside the character and there's mesh behind your camera, be careful with the projected falloff shape, which I don't know if I should show it in, in my custom interface or the, the proper interface. It's under brush settings, falloff. Uh, I toggle between sphere and projected falloff shape a lot. Uh, to quickly explain, a sphere will mean that my clicks, when I, as I'm weight painting, will have an influence in a sphere around where my cursor intersects the mesh. Uh, and projected is kind of the same, except instead of a sphere, it's a cylinder that is projected from my viewpoint into infinity. Uh, so if I click here, uh, because of like some precision thing, sometimes it could end up affecting stuff that's behind the camera, which is a nightmare because you can't see what you just did. So if you're in a precarious view angle like this, uh, use sphere, uh, fall off type on your brush. So I'm just gonna do that. And so as I am adding these weights to the jaw, they are getting subtracted from the head because of auto-normalize. I don't know why this vertex is being so finicky, but there you go. Okay, so this looks like a proper nightmare, but you know what? Uh, at this point, I think it's close enough that we can maybe make it a bit cleaner by just doing a, a quick uh, smooth vertex weights operator, which I love, except, well, yeah, you have to, okay, so I think, I don't know why, maybe somebody fixed it. But normally by default, it's not set to deform pose bones. Instead, it smooths, I think, only the active group, which is usually like, pretty much always not what you want. You usually want the form post bones. Uh, so yeah, if you use this operator, make sure to, make sure to uh, press F9 or bring up the redo panel and set this to the form post bones and then the operator actually becomes useful. Uh, okay, so yeah, let me just do that a bit more and now let's uh, paint a bit more. There we go, so we kind of opened the jaw, the teeth are getting in the way. Maybe we'll take care of that too at some point. Uh, okay, there you go, close enough, it's a start, uh, whatever. 
uh, yeah, I hope that kind of gave some more idea of like the tools and the workflow. Uh, and so now might be a time to jump into the future. Let me look at my notes. Okay. Okay, yeah, let's tell you what, I think for the sake of time, I will jump into the future where I rigged the teeth, because that's really not that exciting. Um, so I believe I need my checkpoint number five, joint teeth weighted, perfect, boom. And hopefully the weights that I did here are a bit cleaner. Oh, and I gave this one a bone group. I should also show that, actually. So there you go. Um, now the jaw opens and the teeth uh, are coming with it and the tongue. And what I want to do next is to place some lip bones uh, for, because the final goal for me uh, in the next 10 minutes, I guess, is to uh, be able to make Sintel smile a bit. And honestly, I'm starting to get a bit concerned for time, but it's going to be fine. Let's see. In fact, maybe I'll just uh, start skipping into the future a bit more. So uh, here's a center lip bone. I want it to be properly centered, so I reset my cursor. I set the pivot to 3D cursor, SX0. Boom, now it's centered. Uh, and then rename this to lip uh, top, and then, well, actually, lip, lip top center. Am I on German keyboard again? Why is ZY? Oh, man. Uh, lip top center, lip, lip bot center. Bone names are up to you, obviously. Uh, and so I'm just gonna, I could do this with bandy bones, which is actually what I did in the built-in Sintel metric. So that's an option too. Uh, maybe I just generate this for a second just to show, oh, that takes a second. Um, so if you wanna rig a face with bandy bones, Go for it, go ham. Uh, it's sometimes better, sometimes not. I don't know. <laughs> just try it, see what feels best. For the sake of simplicity here, I'm gonna be just rigging it with some regular old, boring old bones, which actually, eh, it has some benefits, but whatever. So I'm gonna slap some cube shapes on this because I am boring like that. Let's make them a bit smaller. Uh, and I mean, yeah, I think I'm gonna skip this part because you can imagine exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to have some lip corner bones and then something in the middle. And then what else I would need is an, another ring of bones outside of this because just these bones wouldn't be really enough to, um, to make a smile or at least it wouldn't be very good. So yeah, I would have something like this and they would all be properly named and that's exactly what we're going to see right here. Oh, but they're also weight painted. Eh, that's fine. You've seen the weight paint enough, I think. So here we have a setup of um, some lips that have been weighted. So the way I would weight paint them just to show um, is really just, because auto normalize is turned on. Um, so in the step before this, uh, the, the bottom lips would be fully weighted to the jaw. The top lip would be fully weighted to the head. <laughs> Clean it up. Um, and then as I just add weights to a lip bone, it would automatically subtract the same weights from the head which is exactly what I want. Another thing that you can do is uh, select like the whole damn it, row of uh, deforming lip bones, and you can kind of paint them together, uh, which is especially nice for the blur brush, so I can like blur them all together, which is kind of nice. Uh, so I can, advise, uh, I can recommend doing that, and you do need an option enabled for that, which is called multi-paint. I always have this enabled. It is disabled by default. Welcome to Blender. Uh, and so you can do the same idea with the, with the whole outer ring. So because you can see that this whole area is red and you definitely want that. So if you're moving every bone here, you want the whole area to move, which means you, you want the head to have no influence here at all. And if you aren't careful, then you could have like, you know, these small bits of influence and that's not good. Uh, so yeah. And another way to get rid of that without multi-paint would be to just select the head and just subtract it. But for some reason, for me, sometimes the other way feels better. Uh, okay, so we have lips, and then uh, I think I, I even set up a control bone here already, but hopefully it does nothing yet. Okay, so I also created a control bone, which is just a bone that does nothing, so this is just a... Uh, eh? Excuse me, wait, people are sure. Why is it down there? Oh, rotation, okay. So uh, I have a control bone here, which is just a cloud copy rig type, which I guess I didn't explain what cloud copy is yet. It's like literally do nothing, rig type, basically. As long as everything is disabled, it will just do nothing. It just gives you a bone. Um, and you might ask, well, why do you even need to assign a rig type for that? I don't know, because you have to. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's just a, a bone currently that does absolutely nothing. And what I wanted to do is that when, when I move it this way, whoa, on local, oh, local or normal, uh, when I move it, come on, 
on this axis, I want uh, the lips to go wide. If I move it on this axis, I want the lips to go up. And when I do both, I want it to uh, smile. So let's start doing that in what? Six minutes. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. So uh, the action setup system in CloudRig is what I'm going to show next. So if I come to the armature of my MetaRig, um, there is a section here called Actions. Currently, it's empty. And what I want to do is create an action. So I'm going to bring up, uh, what is it called, Dope Sheet, Action Editor, create a new action, which you can just do by inserting a keyframe, but whatever. I'm going to rig it name, uh, I'm going to rig it, I'm going to name it rig <laughs> dot syntel, uh, whatever, lips wide. And then we're going to slap some keyframes in there. And I'll come back to this interface in a second. Uh, Wait, I want to have this not here, but on the generated rig. So let me just fix that. There we go. Uh, so I'm going to hide the control. I'm going to hide the, the form guys, hide the wireframe. And I'm just going to very roughly, uh, I mean, like I said, it's not going to look great. Don't worry about it. But you know what? If you want to make it look great, just slap on a smooth corrective. That's how you become a real rigger. Boom. Look how beautiful it is. See? Amazing. Perfect weights, basically. Uh, unironically, though, I do recommend Corrective Smooth, even for production. It's very fast, and as you can see, it does a miracle. Just be kind of careful that it's disabled when you're actually authoring something, so you aren't looking at you know, false information. Uh, like if you're weight painting while Corrective Smooth is turned on, I think you're going to have a bad time. Not as bad as if you would try to sculpt with Corrective Smooth on, um, but uh, almost as bad. OK, so look, I made a pose. The lips go wide. Uh, I'll symmetrize it by, I have a hotkey, Shift X, to enable pose mirroring. So I just touch, the bo touch these bones again. I have a hotkey, Control Shift F, to mirror, extend the selection. And then I put keyframes. And then I go back to frame 0. And then I reset everything, put keyframes. So we have some animation here. Well, it's just two keyframes. Um, and I want this to be linear, which I, uh, is complicated. But you want this to be linear. <laughs> Uh, for, for okay, the reason is because if an animator is moving the control um, and you are blending this pose in along with the animator's move and movement of this control, um, if this is set to Bezier, it's gonna be weird because as your animator starts moving the control, it's gonna be like blending into it slowly, and as they move it a bit more, it's gonna be faster, and then it's gonna be slower. You don't want that. You want it to be linear to what the animator is doing. So now we want to hook this up to the control that we have. So I'm gonna swap back to the meta rig. Uh, I'm going to add an action slot here, and then I'm going to select the action that we just created. And then it complains immediately that the control bone is missing. You need to specify the control bone, which in, the, in my case is called mouth corner.l, which is this yellow guy over here. I'm sorry, everything is cubes, and there's like stuff in the way all the time. It's kind of hard to see what's going on. Um, OK, so I don't think I'm going to have a whole lot of time to explain how action constraints work. But if you go to the manual, I'm sure you can find some information about this guy. This is the action constraint. And this is uh, what CloudRig is going to create hundreds and hundreds of us, hundreds of for us uh, in a production scenario. In our case, maybe only like uh, 10. So every single bone that, is, um, that has been keyframed by our action will need one of these constraints for every single movement that that bone contributes to. So we want to specify some information to be able to set that up automatically. Uh, so frame start and frame end. If I look at my action that I created, you can see that it starts at 0 and at 10. So that's exactly what you want, 0 to 10. Uh, the target space and channel is what you want the control to, um, uh, the, how you want the control to activate that pose that you created. So in our case, it seems to be local x axis. Uh, positive, and then let's say that we want it to go up to uh, 0 0.02. So we'll set the minimum to 0 and the maximum to 0 0.02. And I think that should be it. It's complaining about tools. And so now if I regenerate the rig, and in theory, so if I come back to frame 0 so that the action isn't already being activated, then if I move this control, there we go. Uh, you have a lips wide action. And so this is nice. Now let's uh, speed run the same thing for the lips up. So I'm going to, uh, where's the new one? This, what? No, I don't want to duplicate it. Eh, new. Uh, rig, Sintel, lips up. This is going to be, I'm also just going to do it very quickly. Time is of the essence. This is going to be very bad. OK, you know what? Let's do it like this. You put the cursor there. Wrong. <laughs> Genius. OK, 
Uh, this is fine. Yeah, just some 3D cursor trickery. We're relying a lot on corrective smooth here, so I'm just going to show how this looks without it. Uh, honestly, I expected worse. It's fine. Of course, with more weight painting and etc., this will be better. Oh, I also wanted to show off the shape key stuff. I don't know if I'm going to have time. Uh, but for now, let's say that this is our, this is our lips up. Uh, we go frame 10, insert keyframe, frame 0, reset, insert keyframe, linear, uh, metric, uh, action, vertebra. This is why I recommend that you do not try to follow along. Uh, Math corner.l, frame 0, frame 10. Which axis is the other one? Uh, y, I guess. Uh, y, location, same numbers as before. We hope that it's positive. Go. Uh, ah, it's not. Eh. Different axis? Which one is? This axis, Y, positive, okay. Then something is wrong. Oh, because we selected the same action, uh, lips up. There we go, we have that. Uh, okay, by coincidence, it kind of combines well, but not that well. So, <laughs> something I wanted to show off is when uh, two shapes are activating at the same time, their combination is not always ideal. And in that case, you want to create a corrective action, which if you've rigged before, is exactly the same idea as a corrective shape key. Um, except it's for actions. So I'm gonna call, and I'm gonna make a new action, call it rig.sintel um, lips up plus wide. And I'm gonna uh, leave the rig in this uh, position where both of the other actions are active. And then I'm gonna start posing, and I'm just gonna make like some very small adjustments, but hopefully a visible adjustment. Oh man, you know what? Maybe I'm gonna make, it, make her smile a bit less, uh, which is sad, but don't worry about it. Oh man, it's kind of a nightmare. Okay, uh, and then, I don't know, uh, make this more curvy. Uh, okay, let's say that has been adjusted, and uh, I want to, okay, wait. Uh, do the same thing on the other side, same thing on the other side. Oh, God, this looks horrible. Uh, let me also, like, move this a bit back, move this a bit back, move this a bit down. Time is running out, and I'm wasting time doing pointless stuff. Uh, whatever. Uh, so, let's say that this is our corrected... Um, uh, pose with some small tweaks, frame zero, frame 10, reset stuff, linear, and now what I can do is add another action slot, but this time, uh, after I select my action, instead of specifying a control bone, another uh, way to go to make this work is to enable the corrective checkbox, which changes, this, uh, changes the parameters, so if I were to select the control bone, instead of this interface, you get this. You have a trigger A and a trigger B, and I'm gonna select these actions for those. So one of the triggers is up, the other is wide, and that's about it. And then you regenerate, and now the correction... What do you think, is it working? Uh, what is on two? Oh, the frame end is on two. <gasps> Thank you. So good. Okay, there you go. You can see she's smiling less, the correction is working. Time, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm over two minutes, okay. In that case, I won't show the shape key stuff, but if you wanna find out about the shape key stuff, it's somewhere <laughs> online, right, rigging. Um, actually, maybe I should just show this whole area, so if you go to studio.blender.org. Yeah, yeah, exactly, so this is exactly what I want to show. But so if you go to studio.blender.org and you go to pipeline and tools and rigging, you get kind of a rough idea and a lot of links for all the stuff that I've used today. Uh, so there's cloud rig, there's easy weight, uh, and there's post shape keys, which I didn't have a chance to show off, but it does have a tutorial video that I don't hate that much. Uh, it's 20 minutes long, so um, maybe uh, it's a good thing that I didn't get started on that, huh? Thank you so much.